It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Praise the Lord. Amen. Start with Hebrews 4.14. We'll continue teaching on the subject of holding fast to your confession of faith. A lot of times you just mention the word confession, people immediately think of uh, something negative or failure. But really, uh, Paul in the New Testament has so much more to say about the confession of your faith than the confession of your failure. So Paul's talking here about the confession of your faith. And so he says, hold fast to that confession of faith. And then in Hebrews 10, 23, without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. So hold on tight to your confession of faith and be conscious of the influence of that confession, the influence of that confession on your future, on your identity, on your consciousness, amen, on the unseen realm, the the importance of your confession. I like to say it this way, your mountain needs to hear your voice. In other words, you need to hear your pastor's voice or you need to hear ministry gifts voice, but your mountain needs to hear your voice. In other words, the confession of your faith. So Paul says, hold on tight to that confession of faith. And there's four major categories of your confession of faith. We're going to see if we can cover some of these. But he says, be conscious of the importance of that confession of faith and hold on tight. Why would he tell you to hold on tight? Well, a couple of reasons. One, it's pretty significant in what happens in your confession of faith. And uh, the, the damage that can happen if you turn loose of it. Hold on tight to your confession of faith. So he says um, four different major categories of your confession of faith. Number one is what God has done for us in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, which would include uh, faith in the blood of Jesus. What happened on the cross, the blood of his cross, but also the blood of his resurrection and the confession of faith in that blood and holding on tight to that. Number two is the confession of who we are now, our identification, who we are now, and who we are in Christ. Who we are now and what we have in Christ. Who we are, what we have in Christ, our identification with Christ. So we know there's 130 in Christ scriptures. And so when I was 17 years old, uh, I heard Dad Hagen teaching on the subject of faith at my dad's church. And uh, I'd heard the best preachers, you know, a great evangelist and great revivals and um, uh, knew the Bible, but just uh, wasn't doing too well. <laughs> and so actually they never had revival unless they, they, they would pray that I would get saved again. So I've been saved, I've been saved many times, you know, I would say, people say, well, what did you do? I said, that's before the last time I got saved. So, so they'd pray you get saved again. And then I always say they, they baptized me different formulas and held me underwater for a while to see if that would work. So, so when dad Hagen came, um, he was a teacher. So he wasn't like preaching, hollering, spitting. He was just teaching the word. Well, uh, he would explain how faith works. And even though I knew a lot of sermons, I really didn't understand how faith works or how to live by faith or how to exercise my faith. I love what Brother Copeland said one time when he met R. Roberts. He said, I met a man who actually used his faith on purpose. (laughs) That was great. And so learn how to use your faith or exercise your faith. So when Dad Hagen was teaching on it, of course, his two favorite scriptures in uh, the New Testament are Mark 11, 23 and 24. And 22, have faith in God, 23. And so I, I learned uh, actually so much from him just on Mark 11, 23 and 24. And at 17 years old, 
uh, he was teaching on the speaking part of faith that Jesus pointed out three times, saying part, believing once. And uh, he said, I have to do three times more teaching on the saying part. Then you do on the believing part of people won't get it. That's, that's Jesus' sermon. <laughs> well, if that was Jesus' sermon, I thought, well, that's pretty significant. So the saying part. So when I was 17 years old. Then I, I studied on this confession of faith, 17. So I just got me the scriptures on who you are in Christ and on the blood. And I uh, got my favorite ones down, probably about 35 or 40. And then I recorded myself saying those scriptures. And then I'd get up every morning and push the play button on that little cassette player. And I'd hear myself saying who I am and what I have because I'm in Christ. Amen. Amen. So you, see, you start off with this confession, Colossians 1, 12 through 14, giving thanks unto the Father who has qualified and enabled us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us to the kingdom of his dear Son. In him we have, let's try it one more time, in him we have present possession, we have redemption, through his blood, even the forgiveness, or the word there is remission of sins. So I'd hear myself going over these in Christ scriptures and the confession of faith, and that would immediately challenge every other thought in my mind. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can say, I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. So at 17 years old, that's just kind of where I started understanding the significance of the saying part of faith, the speaking part of faith, or what you call the authority of the believer, and whosoever shall have whatsoever. And verse 24, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them, you shall have my thought. Well, I can just get anywhere in the world from here. And pretty much have. I've just... Uh, stopped at the airport and was uh, flying yesterday, and, and they, had a, they had a magazine, National Geographic, said a uh, hundred places in the world that will change your life. So I went through all those hundred places. I mean, from Nepal, you know, to India, to Africa, you know, to Europe, to America. I went through it, and so I said, <laughs> I've, been, I've been most of all those places. Amen. I started preaching in Africa when I was 17 years old. So this is over, over 50 years ago. So uh, I decided the Lord gave me this, and I'm just going to have to go tell somebody. Amen. Amen. So I preached all over East Africa. And uh, when I was 17, then went back again and again. And so still, still traveled around the world. But the message of faith is what really changed my life. Come on, not just a bunch of different sermons, but now how to receive that word and how to activate that word in my behalf. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So everything looked different once David ran at Goliath. Because I heard that since I'm like eight years old, six years old. I thought, ain't David something? But I found out how David killed the giant was he said, and then he said, and then he said. I thought, man, you're going to have to win the war of words before you can win the fight of faith. And so the Lord told me, never run at your giant with your mouth shut. <laughs> so all the stories look different. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> One of my favorite ones, you know, all the stories look different, but I'm going to learn how faith works. And I, Acts 16 looked like, well, wow, that's a different story now. Paul and Silas in prison, you know, and here at midnight prayed and sang praises to God, and the prisoners heard them, and then the, the prison shook, you know, and chains fell off, you know, and doors came open. I thought, well, that's, that's cool when I was eight years old, but when I understood how faith works, aha, uh -huh, here's what Paul and Silas are doing at midnight. Amen. In other words, they lifted their voices. That's when the Lord said, your voice is your address in the realm of the Spirit. That if you're silent, you will lose by default. Come on, so you can't afford to be silent when you're going through adversity and a challenge. You're going to have to get your mouth moving and lift your voice. Amen. And so I thought, ah, oh, what's Paul thinking while he's in those chains? I thought, ah, oh, here's what he's thinking. Oh, Mr. Devil, you got me good. Come on, beat my back. Come on, got me embarrassed. Bound my feet. Bound my hands. Come on, got me in the deepest prison. But devil, you made one mistake. 
you should have taped my mouth shut. Because as long as I can move my mouth, I can move a mountain. So at midnight, they refused to be silent, and they lifted their voices to God and began to sing praises to God. And it says, and the prisoners heard them. Woo, praise the Lord. So now that story looks different. Y'all still with me here? So the word of faith and the light, living in the light of redemption and how faith works, changed the way I saw all the stories in the Bible. Wow. And Jesus said, anybody can do that. All right, well, let's just try this side over. He said... Come on, Jesus didn't say this is some exclusive club. He said, whosoever shall say, come on, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I thought, I'm getting in that club right now. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Amen. So that spirit of faith will take the whine out of your voice. Come on, it'll take the victim out of your voice. Come on, and you'll refuse to be silent when the devil's picking on you and attacking you. Our thoughts are coming to your mind. You say, hold it just a second here. I'm going to say something right now. <laughs> and so they lifted up their voice and giving praise to God. Amen. Similar to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Come on. When they began to sing and to praise. The Lord set ambushments against their enemies. Come on, it, it, it says when they began, so they weren't even finished yet. They just started singing praise. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And while they're lifting their voice, that's their confession. Yes. Amen. So you see this confession of your faith. Woo, mountain moving faith. Come on, God ain't looking at how cute you are. Come on. He ain't looking at the color of your skin. Come on. He ain't worried about you talking like a redneck. God's just looking for faith. If he can find somebody that's got some faith, come on, and somebody that will dare to believe and lift your voice. Come on now. God said, I'm looking for faith. Amen. Amen. Woo. So the saying or the speaking part of faith. Wow. Glory to God. So from Hebrews 4.14, holding fast to that. Mm. Amen. Come on, four major areas. Amen. All the way down from the blood, all the way down to your identification with Christ, who you are in Christ, all the way down to what the Word and the indwelling Holy Spirit. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> oh, we ought to just have champions all over this place, man. I said, what the Word? Come on, what the Word? This is my confession. I put the Word in my mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the And then, uh, you know, uh, Reinhard Bonke came and jumped in there while I was in Africa. I was reading uh, his, his life story. And he said, the Lord said to him, my word in your mouth is just as powerful as my word in my mouth. Come on. <laughs> Amen. In other words, the word of God is a spoken thing. It was spoken before it was written, and it was written so it could be spoken. It is inspired by God. God breathed. It didn't come out of God's pen. It came out of God's mouth. It works the best when it has a voice. So when you put God's Word in your mouth, what do we call that? Mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation from God. You put God's Word in your mouth and breathe in that Word. Amen. You breathe in the faith of God and you speak that Word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Woo, tremendous power available to every believer when you dare to release your faith. 
speaking the Word of God. Come on. And one man, one woman with a spirit of faith can change any family, change any city, change any nation. One man, one woman with a spirit of faith. Woo! Everybody say, I got it. Hallelujah. I'm holding on fast to my confession of faith without wavering. Woo! Praise the Lord. Amen. He is faithful, that promise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What happened? When they lifted their voices, when they began to sing and to praise, God said ambushment. God said, I'll fight your battle for you. So the Lord said to me this way one time. He said, he said, the moment you act on the word, he said, I make myself responsible for your results. All right, let's try that one more time. I'll see, see if we got the thinking and the drinking section over here. The moment you take that word, listen now, and the initial act of faith is speaking. Come on, there's other acts of faith, but the initial act of faith is your faith must initially, first of all, move your mouth. Come on, if your faith can't move your mouth, come on. Some of y'all wait till noon before you ever make a bold declaration of who Christ is and who you are in Christ and what the blood has done for you. Praise the Lord. Come on, you can't wait till noon. You ain't living by coffee. Come on, you're living by faith. Amen. If you don't live by faith. Come on, you got to get up in the morning and say, I'm fixing to say a few things right now, and there's tremendous power available to me as a believer. And I say, Mountain, you're going to have to get out of the way because I'm coming through here. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and laugh for a minute and say, Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Come on, act like you got something. Come on, act like you got something. Come on, walk like you planning on doing something. Come on, talk like you planning on going somewhere. Come on, don't act like you're stuck where you're at right now. Come on, you're a mountain moving, giant killing machine, baby. Yeah. yeah. Praise God. Glory to God. Glory. Woo. Glory to God. The spirit of faith is a fire that is lit by your mouth. Let's try it again. Come on. It's great to hear other people speak and declare, and we need to hear that. But when you're at your house, come on, you're going to have to know how to get lit. Come on, when you're at your house, you got to say, I'm going to have to say a few things right now because my feelings and my circumstances, listen now, Dad Hagen said, you hold fast to your confession of faith, even if failure is on all four corners. All right, let's try that one more time. Right, come on, that means you, you look one way, you see failure. You look the other way, you see failure. You look in front of you, you see failure. Look by there's a failure. And you say, but I'd like to say a few things right now. I'm just going to say the same thing Jesus says, same thing God says, same thing the Word says. I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus. I'm a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away. Everything has become new. I've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Come on, God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I do not lack for ability. I do not lack for opportunity. I never lack for money. Ah. Woo. Ha, ha, ha. Even in your prayer life, Dad Hagen said, successful prayer ends with the glad confession, I have it now. How'd you like to act like you got something right now? Amen. I said, this glad confession, I have it now. I'm not trying to get it. I believe I receive it right now. My confession is right now. Who I am, what I have. Because I'm in Christ. Woo, you just look a lot better in Christ. Hallelujah. Come on, so you get that. 
Get the whine out of your voice. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, get the victim out of your voice. Come on, put victory in your voice. Isn't that the name of this ministry or something? You have to have some victory in your voice. <laughs> Woo! All right, look at Hebrews 13, 15 real quickly here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you ready? Are you ready? Hold fast. Hold on tight. Come on, this is not the boring part of your faith life. Let's try that again. I said, your confession is not the boring part of your faith life. Come on, this, this, is, this is like, man, the spirit of faith will light you up. No, you don't get out your arm now. Confession number one. <laughs> <sighs> That's number two. <laughs> I think I missed one. <laughs> that ain't all you missed. Listen. Now, <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. This is the reality of your redemption. And your confession brings you into agreement with God. Woo! Woo! Amen. This will get you anywhere you need to go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hebrews 13, 15. Let me give you that. Praise the Lord. Woo. Are you ready? This is another confession scripture. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, unless you can't sing. Oh, no, it's not in there, unless you can't sing. <laughs> you said, that's not my ministry. All right, well, listen, camel breath. Listen. <laughs> I, I told my pastor friend, I said, you know, I used to pray that I could sing till I heard you, then I started praying you could sing. Anyway, <laughs> but this ain't, this ain't about you being pretty here. We're talking about your voice. Faith can be in your voice. Amen. Amen. Wow. I read this uh, uh, short story about Pavarotti because I used to love to hear him sing a tremendous voice, very powerful voice. And, the, and this little story said that Pavarotti went off on vacation somewhere on an island and he had, he had left his uh, identification, you know, and all the stuff. And here he is on this island with his uh, wife and family. And they s delivered a package that was for him. And he went to pick up the package. And the man said, let's show me your identification. He said, I, I left all that at home. He said, but, you know, I am Pavarotti. He said, but I left all that at home. The guy said, well, I, I have to see your identification. Pavarotti immediately began to sing. And his voice, he lifted his voice. He started singing. And the guy said, you can have the package. <laughs> Come on, come on, your identification ain't in your wallet. I said your identification ain't in your wallet. Your identification's in the Word of God. And if you'll lift up your voice and bring yourself into agreement with that, God will say, okay, you can have the package. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries faith for every nation. There is a tremendous power in the positive confession of who Christ is, what he has done, and what he is doing for us right now at the right hand of God. Your faith will never rise above the level of your confession. Satan trembles when you open the word, but he runs when you speak the word. Your confession of faith brings you into a consciousness of who you are in Christ. The Word of God was spoken before it was written, and it was written so it could be spoken. When you hold fast to your confession of faith, you are connected to Jesus' victory. There is a miracle in your mouth. Turn your faith loose today by believing and speaking God's Word. For your offering of any amount, 
we will send you Mark's new book, The Great Confession. In this book, you will learn the power of a positive confession of the blood of Jesus, who you are in Christ, and the power of speaking God's word. Believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural in your life. The spirit of faith will take the victim out of your voice and put victory in your voice. Get ready to overcome adversity and watch the mountains in your life move. You'll also receive the brand new three CD set, The Great Confession. In these messages, you will learn the importance of holding fast to your positive confession of faith. You can also listen to these messages for free on the Mark Hankins Ministry app. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. For your gift of any amount, you will receive a three CD set and Pastor Mark Hankins' new book, The Great Confession. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today, and I hope that it was a blessing to you. I know that this message is so powerful, life-changing and life-giving, and I'm so glad that you got to hear it today. Something that is very exciting is my dad came out with a brand new book called The Great Confession. Let me read you a quote from this book by F.F. F. Bosworth. It says, nothing will establish and build your faith as quickly as the confession of who you are and what you have in Christ. Okay, listen to this. Confession precedes possession. It is so important that we speak and proclaim and declare the Word of God over our lives. It's not just enough to, to hear the Word. It's not just enough to look at the Word. It's not just enough to be around the Word. But once you get the Word in your mouth, that's when things begin to change. The good news is we want to get this book to you free of cost, but any amount of gift that you want to do, if you want to contribute any amount, we want to get this book to you in your hands because we know it is going to change your life. So you can call the number on the screen or go to markhankins.org. You can also go on the app and we will send you this book for free. We hope you have a wonderful day. Be blessed. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. I'll see you next time. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. Thank you for watching.